what's happening in space right now. How do you know if two satellites are about to collide, shattering to thousands of new pieces? How do you know if someone did it intentionally? How do you know if they're about to do it again? That's the problem I'm trying to solve, what I want to talk about this morning. We use space for a wide variety of benefits here on Earth. Everything from precision weather forecasting to search and rescue on the high seas, to live sports beamed around the world, to GPS tracking of our favorite pets. Space is an invisible but highly integrated part of our modern society. But as we develop more uses for space and we launch more and more satellites in orbit around the Earth to provide those benefits, we're running into the danger of space potentially becoming unsustainable. Right now, there are about a thousand active satellites in orbit around the Earth. And right alongside them are about 21,000 pieces of space debris, dead satellites, spent rockets, other bits and fragments. They're the result of humanity's 50 years in space. But that's just the stuff that we track. There are another half million objects that are too small to track with our current technology. But we know they exist, and they pose an increasing hazard to those active satellites. Much of this debris is concentrated in the same regions of space where all the active satellites are. And it's those regions that are at risk for becoming potentially unsustainable in the future. Last year, those active satellites performed about 150 maneuvers to avoid potential collisions with other space objects. And more than once, astronauts on board the International Space Station were forced to evacuate into the Soyuz lifeboat because the warning of a potential collision came too late to maneuver. An important part of solving this problem is something called space situational awareness. Space situational awareness is information about the space environment and activities in space. Imagine for a moment, you're in a car driving down the road. You can look out the windows and you can see traffic, signs, and you're alert to potential dangers. What if I blacked out those windows? Even with a GPS unit that tells you where you are, how safe would you feel driving around? This is how many satellites are flown today. Most satellite operators have telemetry that gives them the location of their own satellite. But very few have any information at all about the other objects around them. That makes it difficult for them to operate in a safe and responsible manner. So what I've been working on is trying to improve space situation awareness for satellite operators. And I've broken the problem into two parts, data and tools. And the idea is to improve the space situation awareness data and the tools to make sense of that data to all satellite operators to help improve their knowledge about what's going on in space. Let's start with the data side of the problem. Tracking satellites in orbit and knowing what's going on requires large network of radars and optical telescopes spaced around the globe to periodically track all those thousands of objects. And the hundreds of thousands of observations from that tracking needs to be fused together into what's known as a satellite catalog. Now, some of this is already being done by governments, militaries, universities, even backyard hobbyists. But there are two problems. A lot of the data they're collecting is not being shared with satellite operators. And the data is being stored in fragmented databases that don't talk to each other. So we decided a good first step will be to increase knowledge about what's out there collecting data. Earlier this year, we launched a website, the Global Space Situation Awareness Sensor Database. And it's a mashup of Google Maps and a wiki. And we put in publicly available information 
on more than 200 SSA sensors around the globe. Each sensor has its own page with an embedded Google map so you can zoom in and see exactly where it's located and a wiki section with details about its capabilities and technical description. As you can imagine, this is quite a huge undertaking. Over the next several months, we're putting together a team of volunteers and experts to help flesh out the data on the website and make it, make it a success. The next step is gonna to be to look at this data set and see where the capability gaps are. Which of these sensors and networks it makes sense to hook together? And we're already working with governments and other data providers to put in place data sharing policies. Now for the second half of the problem, the software tools. The challenge wasn't any easier. Many of the tools to do space situation awareness are either decades old, government funded, legacy behemoths, or they're proprietary solutions costing tens of thousands of dollars per license. Neither of these options is suitable for a lot of satellite operators, especially those in emerging space powers in developing countries. So a couple of years ago, we started talking about the idea of creating an open source software project for SSA. The idea would be to develop a set of open source software tools to provide some basic SSA capabilities. Capabilities like the ability to detect if two objects are potentially gonna collide in space, or the ability to calculate an avoidance maneuver, or to maintain a catalog of space objects. And along with that, we wanted to bring modern computing concepts to the field of astrodynamics. Concepts like APIs, open standards, web interfaces, cross-platform compatibility, and scalable architecture. Concepts you can find in any one of hundreds of Kickstarter projects, Silicon Valley startups, and college dorm rooms, but are a bit lacking in a field dominated by governments, militaries, and people over 50. After a couple of years, <laughs> we started working on this, and in collaboration with a colleague of mine, Dr. Paul Safola, former MIT professor and a world-class astrodynamicist, we authored a series of papers outlining the shortcomings of the current approach and the potential benefits of an open source solution. And we spent the last couple of years traveling the world, presenting these papers at various conferences, and we're starting to see the idea take hold. Recently, we've been working with a small company near Toulouse, France, called CS Information Systems. They have an existing open source project called ORCID. ORCID is a flight dynamics library for visualizing satellite orientations and calculating orbits. Paul worked with the ORCID team to develop a module for his own semi-analytic satellite propagator, which has been added to the code base. Most recently, they've created a project management team to discuss the future of the ORCID project. Paul's a member of that team, and there's good hope that at some point soon, ORCID will have at least some of the capabilities we're looking for in an open source software suite that's available to everyone, everywhere. So we're making progress on both halves of the problem of providing better SSA to all satellite operators. But we're not done there. Space sustainability is about a lot more than just tracking space debris and preventing satellite collisions. As more and more countries use space for national security, the greater the chances are that mishaps, misperceptions, or irresponsible behavior in space could spark conflict or escalate conflict here on Earth. And providing greater space situation awareness data to countries can help prevent that. But there's more. For a while now, the US military has been running a series of space war games to kind of figure out what might happen in future conflicts that include space. In a recent one, they added an interesting twist. In addition to the standard blue team representing the good guys and the red team representing the bad guys, they added a green team, an observer team that was made up of neutral countries, international organizations, the public and the media. And in this scenario, they gave the green team a fictional tool. Let's just call it Google Space. 
that allowed them to see what was going on in the conflict in space. And not surprisingly, that had an impact on the decisions that were made during the war. So ultimately, my goal is to improve space situation awareness for everyone, everywhere. I want to try and turn this into something like this and give everyone everywhere the tools and information to make space safer and more sustainable, to try and prevent conflict, to spark innovation about new ways to new space, new business models and economic development, and give everyone everywhere the ability to hold each other accountable for their actions in space. And just maybe, open source space will make the world a better place. Thank you.